Hi, I'm uh, Nick Meyer. I'm recording this at my house in my attic um, with uh, what feels like kind of the um, the beginning of the end of, of this pandemic. So hopefully soon um, we'll be able to see each other again. Um, it's starting to feel that way as summer starts to arrive here in Massachusetts. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted to show you a bit of, uh, I'm gonna keep it kind of casual. Um, but show you my books, uh, my books and some other stuff around here that um, that are things that I look at all the time and things that I sort of find inspiring and give me ideas. Um, so let me just show you this bookshelf first. Um, so up here, this is uh, the bookshelf. It's also kind of a den, living room. It's where I print pictures and make new dummies and watch uh, crime dramas. Uh, I don't I don't keep these books in any real order, so to speak of, because sometimes there's some color, uh, sometimes not. But um, I like to be surprised and spend time finding things when I'm looking for one book. I sort of will be looking for one thing and forget a, find a book that I forgot about before. And, um, and uh, find a whole new path there. Um, that was starting to spread down to the floor here. Um, here's, this is a new, I'm starting a new dummy for a, a new book. Um, the way that I've been working, this is actually some old dummies. Um, of, this is two dummies of a new book that I'm working on. Um, just to get different sizes and feels of the sequence and the edit and see what it looks like. Um, here's my new book, The Local, as is published, but a couple other um, iterations. I think I probably made, I don't know, 30, 30 different versions of this before landing. This, this early one probably has about, uh, I don't know, 10 pictures that maybe ended up in the final edit, maybe less. Um, so they're all different and uh, kind of a nice record to s watch my process and see where I, how my edits go and how my style change as I go along. I have a shelf here for all the books that I can't sell um, that just live here and will probably live here forever. And um, let's see, so there's all these books, I've pulled a few out, and I'll show you a few other things as I go around the corner here, um, some more books here, some of the fancier ones, specialer ones, uh, you can see I'm not the most organized of people, but, um, I'll start here, I'll show you, um, one thing that I, always come back to is uh, found photographs. I kind of hate the term vernacular photographs. It sounds pompous for something that is so, um, just so objective. But um, I have a few things down here that I've been looking at. Um, a bunch of negatives that, uh, just this is a grandmother and grandson, I assume, and there's a mom and her kids. Um, this is an old uh, dry plate glass negative that I can't tell if it's been damaged on purpose or if it's just a nice accident that this, uh, what seems to be kind of a wrestler, uh, his head's blown up. And um, there's also, this is one of my, well, let's see, there's a, somebody looks like they're hiking up a snowy mountain. I'm a real fan of things like this. Let's see if I can, um, where it's early, we'll call it early Photoshop, where they have um, created a cartoon using a photograph. And uh, things like this, where they've just drawn directly onto the tintype, uh, which, which looks like a Sharpie. Uh, so it's probably not that old actually, but I still like um, what's, been happening there. Um, here's a, uh, it's hard to see there, but uh, there's a hidden mother 
with just an arm coming in. And um, I really like the ones that I just find on the street. Uh, this is actually a drawing of Abraham Lincoln that I found. Let's see if you can see it okay. I found it behind a photograph in a frame that I got at a thrift store. Uh, this is one of my favorite things uh, that I just love because I have no idea what's going on, but um, I found this letter, I think in the Fenway when I lived in Boston, and um, it had this picture of a giraffe inside as well as a, f uh, a picture from a photo booth, which is somewhere in this pile. Um, and it has this amazing, amazing writing um, that says, sometimes we all get off track a lot of the times we all uh, lose focus on the important things in life. I'm sorry for everything I've put you through. And I'm sorry that I couldn't have been a better boyfriend slash friend slash person. I just want you to know that I do understand, I do understand you and I understand your perspective and I know exactly where you're coming from. I know that it was the best of times and the worst of times, but I want you to know honestly that I understand you and that I will always love you. You've taught me more in six years than any single person, place, or thing. I want you to know that no matter what happens, I will always be here for you. I will always love you. You're a beautiful person that has opened my eyes to many new circumstances, which is completely spelled wrong, and have allowed me to grow as a person. Uh, you have not only been there uh, when things were really bad between us and fighting was no stop, but you were also there when things were at their absolute best. In no way am I writing this in an attempt to, quote, get back together. I simply wanted to let you know how important you have been, are, and continue to be in my life. Um, and that's the card. So it's sort of a little object there uh, that I've kept with me for years and years. Um, I love it when things have these sort of bites taken out of them, mouse-eaten things. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. I found this on the street. Um, and it's very strange because I found it on the street, uh, you know, in the t early 2000s, but it's clearly from the 80s or 70s. Um, but what I really love about these two frames in particular is just there's um, one frame, there's a little boy kissing his mom, and then the next frame, the boy is gone and then replaced by his dad. And, uh, that's one of those things that's just such a uh, family vote dad thing to do. And that was um, why I wanted to show this type of thing, um, which you can see is actually, there I am. Um, but these are these photo albums that my dad kept for us. Um, I'm starting here on this page, but my dad, this was one of his hobbies, I guess, but he would um, keep photo albums for all, all four of his kids. And um, they just, they didn't really pull any punches. And so, you know, and here, this one's called Grandma's Page, and this was the last pictures of my grandmother um, before she died. And so that's how that's all written. Um, they're always written in the first person perspective. Um, there I am riding a dolphin. Uh, so it says, yeah, this is my 18th birthday. Yeah, I turned 18 on September 1st. Um, the camera must have jammed for the picture. You can see there's double exposure happening in that one. Um, but, you know, the pictures aren't spectacular. Um, they're just kind of the family photos of me, my life. And But they're so highly curated. Um, there's prom. Um, that... And they're just like... It's... it's um, it's the, the narration and that sort of, uh, just how the, it's been rewritten. My whole life was rewritten for me, and there's sort of only vague truths. Here's when my, right before my grandfather died. So there's, there's a lot of reality, happy moments, um, kind of, there's one right when my appendix burst. Uh, first thing my dad did was to take a picture of me in the hospital. Um, and so it just kind of goes on and on like that, um, through good times and not so good times, but, um, 
always kind of well, well edited and uh, narrated. Let's see, there's another good one of me. I think I was about maybe 13. Um, let's see. So I pulled out a few books. This um, uh, this book is is um. Well, two books actually, but they're Barbara Bosworth new book with uh, Ice Fog Press called The North Woods. Um, and this uh, just is a wonderful object that's just beautifully printed and very poetically sequenced. Um, and the work is split into two, the, each book. One is sort of the, the, uh, the natural world, the nature, and um, the second book has uh, the people who entered, who live off nature and enter it, um, and the animals that they use for food. And it's just this beautiful poem about being part of nature and um, and using it as survival. Uh, next book I'll show you. Ooh, look at that light. Real glossy cover. Uh, this is a book that was um, came out in 2015-ish, I think. But it's George Shearer, who is a photographer who worked in the you know late 1800s, early 1900s, and these pictures are of um, he would go out at night and uh, photograph animals with um, non-electric lights, which I think is just amazing. Uh, and the the pictures are also just beautiful where these animals are just kind of mysteriously wandering through the landscape. Um, let's see, I pulled out Fires by Ron Jude, a lovely little zine that has this a wonderful sort of using vernacular photographs and uh, objects and images. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, Evidence by Larry Sultan and Mike Mandel, which was, has sort of been a uh, template for me on how I edit and think about editing. Um, just sort of like the same thing with how I think about using found photographs with these found photographs that can create a totally new and sort of abstract narrative um, that evokes just bizarre feelings and confusion um, in a really wonderful, important book. Um, this is just a sort of stupid thing that I have always loved by Kenneth Josephson, The Bread Book. Um, and all it is is slices of bread, one loaf of bread, you kind of can go through slice by slice. And it just, is a really nice, simple experience about what photography can do. Um, another early influence for me, uh, somehow, I don't know why I was an influence, because it doesn't really relate to my work at all, but, um, this Mike Mandel Time Exposures book, which I think probably has more people know it now from the, um, the box set that he put out with Jerry Andell, but, um, I just love this book, that he just kind of wandered into scenes and photographed himself, um, in different, you know, just just invading space and inserting himself. And of course it helps that he kind of looks like a real 70s dope. Um, it's just, it makes me laugh every time I see it. Uh, there's this really lovely little, um, sort of accordion fold book by Daniel Arnold. 
um, NASA Avenue, and this is one of those ones where the construction, it's really all about the construction for me. Um, I'm trying to pull back where you get the sense that you're walking up and down Nassau Avenue in New York. And uh, it's much less about the pictures for me, although the pictures are really, you know, often wonderful and funny. Uh, but it just is a real, the, you know, the feeling of walking. Um, This is, uh, this one's always, Raise a Laugh by Richard Billingham, um, has always been one of my favorite books, um, since I learned about it, and, um, it's, I, the whole experience of looking at it is just, it's such a brutal, brutal work, but it's done with, um, such tenderness and care that even, even when we're having these, you know, sort of horrific experiences um, that there's a sense of humor at play and a sense of love and caring and I just have always been a big fan of um, how you're able to go like that it's right from a really well, you know something that makes me feel horrible this man Ray just falling over drunk and just to lighten the mood we get a duck um, so I'm always always looking at that book. Um, let's see. I have more pulled out here. Some um, books of poetry, which I, I, I had to put in here. I won't go through them, really, but um, Raymond Carver sort of finds his way into my head all the time. I just was, when I pulled this off, I found a nice letter from my, uh, my kids in it. So it's nice to find those types of things in my books. Um, this uh, Coney Island of the Mind by Lawrence Ferlinghetti um, is one that I always go back to. Um, there's certain, certain poems in here that always, always are going to resonate for me. Um, Susan Howe, this book, Depths, which I just, it's such, uh, I will show you this, because she uses words as a visual, um, a visual experience. Let's see that better. Uh, Sam Shepard, The Motel Chronicles, this really um, sort of plays to the romantic in me. Beautiful poems and short prose. Uh, has always worked, and um, William Carlos Williams Patterson, which was a major inspiration for the local. As you can see, there's some photographs stuck in there, too, um, from going over and over that as I was working on that book. Um, and just a few more books, a uh, lot to do with editing and their thought. Um, this book by uh, Gus Powell, Family Car Trouble, that came out, I think it was late 2019, uh, by TBW and um, just everything about this design. Uh, it's sort of a smaller book that's uh, done sort of as if it was a novel. And um, it's, the whole story centers around this family uh, visiting, using their car, and it's, it's Gus's family going to visit his father who's ill. Um, and this relationship between the kids and the car and the family and the perpetual trips to visit an ailing father and um, also done with a very serious subject, a uh, very sad subject, but done with real tenderness and humor um, that feels like it kind of can weave in and out of um, our space. And this, this image always just it's such a moment um, that just has stuck with me a lot. Uh, let's see. Uh, American Pictures by Jacob Holt. Um, 
think I found this copy at an old bookstore, which is a real, real find. Um, and I just, it's just a wonderful book. Um, kind of, he's an interesting guy who's really just trying to sort of solve problems through photography um, and make friends, but just photographing um, and writing so much about um, these harder realities in America as an outsider. So kind of, uh, in some ways, a follow-up to the Americans um, just done with a lot of um, a lot of thought and a lot of awareness. Um, another book just about editing and moving from picture to picture that is um, just a special book, uh, this small thing, but uh, Nathan Lyons' Notations in Passing. which is just, you know, a little bit dated in some of the work, kind of uh, feels a little from that era, the RIT era, Rochester era of photography, but um, really wonderfully sequenced and edited as you move from picture to picture um, to tell a new poem. Um, another all-time favorite that... Um, I go back to all the time is uh, our, the RFK Funeral Train by Paul Fusco. And uh, just something that can be so simple um, where there's no real, you don't need to do too much thinking with it. Um, you just have to go along on this ride, um, moving along through. Uh, through the United States on the train. And it's just, has so much, such power to it, such a powerful book. Um, you know, something that feels somehow more appropriate these days than ever. Another kind of um, no-brainer here. Uh, I was lucky enough, though, that this is an old copy. I have, I think, at least one more copy here down in this bookshelf. Yeah, newer copy. Um, but just, uh, my, uh, I had an uncle who, I have two uncles, actually, who went to RIT in the 60s, um, were photographer for photography, and studied every, with a bunch of the greats there and in Chicago, uh, and I inherited a pretty special book collection from them, including some of these older editions of um, things like American Photographs, um, which is, I keep on a sh my special shelf, um, I only look at the new versions because I'm pretentious. But, uh, you know, there's nothing much to say about this other than that it's a fantastic book and a really important book uh, for me and how I view the world. And the last book I'm going to show you, which is another one I learned about uh, from this collection of books that I got from my uncle. This is the old uh, first edition of A Dialogue with Solitude by Dave Heath. Um, that was, uh, I don't even know who it was published by, but um, I didn't know anything about this work when this book came to me. And I try not to even open it that much because it's such a fragile copy. But I did get the newer edition that came out, I think, around 2000. It's slightly larger. And um, I've been looking a lot at this book lately as I think about my new project that I'm working on. Um, but in this book, Dave, Dave Heath was, uh, you know, a contemporary of um, Robert Franks and really looked up to him in the... 60s and 70s, but was photographing a lot in New York, but was also in the Korean War. And so rather than sort of finding a place in a, in a geographic location, this book really finds uh, uh, its place in um, this emotional space that just feels sort of 
dark and brooding. It's sort of post-war America, um, but also not necessarily about America, just about that, that feeling of uh, malaise and, um, and discomfort that a lot of people were feeling that I, I think we're going to be feeling a lot these days as we um, enter out of this place in the pandemic. Um, so uh, that's pretty much what I had to show you. Um, I would love to go through every book, uh, have people over and look at all the books here. I'm also hoping that um, I can get to see people out in the world and get back to traveling soon. Um, and thanks for joining me along here. All right.